Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. And here we go with the palette tour. We're gonna to be going through every single palette. These are the standard ones that I have. And then we'll be going through the specialty palettes and then the travel palettes. So buckle up, this is gonna be a long one and let's get started. First up, we have M. Graham. I call this my Safari palette. I do have names for all my palettes. This is a USA brand. Oregon. Oops, sorry about the puppy. And I call this my Safari palette. I think I said that. Love this palette. Well used. And if you notice, uh, these are always clean. I always mix on porcelain. Next up, we have the Michael Harden palette that I recently did all the swatching, so I will make sure I put a link. I call this my fairy tale palette. And I even have a couple extra pans that are divided in there from some of the small pans you saw in the haul. And let me see if I can go ahead and get you a recent um, picture that I did. And I recently did this one with those. Oh, I might have been a little too fast. I tried to tag a few things that I recently did um, so you could see how the paints were on paper. And that's my fairy tale palette. Then we're going to go into Old Holland. I haven't used this palette much. I have to say this is one of the palettes that I probably would skip and not add to in the future. I call this my Seaside palette. It has lots of blues. They're good. They're just, I'd pick some of my other paints over these. They're a little more difficult to work with. Um, they don't spread as easily. They tend to have a little more grip to the paper. And now we have Daniel Smith, very well used, well loved palette. I call this my moody palette. There's also a swatching of this on. Um, you can see very well loved, used. Um, I do like to top off all my pans on a regular basis. I find it very relaxing. And I did do this little one out on location and this is a more recent one that you can actually see um, the actual painting online. And I do um, print out their logos and stick them on the front so it's just an easy grab and I know exactly what's in there. Now we're on to the Lutea palette. I call this my organic palette. Um, it's all handmade, woman-owned, um, done in Belgium by raw, with raw materials, kind of a very different type of paint. Um, this one doesn't get as much use, although I know some of you saw the swatching on it and the painting of this one. Lots of fun to work with, something a little different. And now we'll go into classic Windsor & Newton. Can't go wrong with them. I call this my towny palette. It has a very kind of old-fashioned town. They are all pans. I did all buy pans. There's only a few that came out of the tubes. I haven't used this too much, but I'm really liking my, my um, choices. So it's going to be used a lot more in the future. I have a couple of pictures picked out for it. Now we have a Da Vinci, which I absolutely love. Another U.S. brand. And this is my Tropical Palette, for obvious reasons. Very bright. Feels like you're sipping a daiquiri on the 
with tropical plants surrounding you when you look at the color scheme. Something a little fun. Next we have Azaro, which I've actually used quite a bit. This is my Boho palette. The colors tend to be a little more muted and softer, but still vibrant all at the same time. I did top off all these um, pans. Um, they tend to um, sink in quite a bit, so you have to like fill them and then refill them and then refill them again. And let me see, I think I have couple of pictures. This is one that I did with it. And I think that's all that I had sectioned out. All paints have like a different type of quality to them. You know, they they tend to work differently or feel differently. And I think the names are not just color derived for me, but actually how the paint makes me feel. This is called my Surreal palette. They're all Holbein. This is one of the first paints that I ever used. I started using probably about 25 years ago. You can see some of them are <laughs> very cracked. They, um, and then just recently I got this actual palette for it. Um, some of my paints were quite old, and they actually don't even make some of the colors anymore, but I kind of really like having it. And I call this my Surreal palette because the colors are so vibrant. It almost makes me think of a cartoon when they're done on the paper. They don't move a lot. They're very just bold and in your face. And I love this palette. I think it's awesome that they have the... Um, the magnet below. I just wish it was a little wider to get another pan on each row. It tends not to be. This was supposed to be for a brush, but I just stuck a few more extra pans in there. So one of my all-time favorites. And then of odd palettes, this is the Roman Schmal, and I kind of altered this um, palette a little bit. I pulled out the grid thing that they had in the bottom and I filled it, and then I have two extra pans and my color chart. I call this my land palette. It always seems, Roma Schmal seems very grounded, affordable, works great. You know, it's kind of like, like the ground or the land. <laughs> Let me see if I can get you a picture to take a look at. Oh, there we go. And this was a recent one with Roman Schmal. And you can tell these are my little urban sketching books. So I use a lot in these. You gotta love the whole wood box feel. It does make you feel a little fancy when you're using it. I'm running out of room on the desks. Let's see. There we go. Put this one over here too. Now we go into some, I love, love a gallo paints. I have to say it's up there with my Michael Harding, my, um, my M. Grams, and um, my Daniel Smith as some of my favorites that I tend to go for more than the others. And this is called my European Castle palette. The colors tend to be a little more muted than like a Holbein or a Michael Harding, but they're still so rich. They almost have this muted, rich feel to them that I don't feel that any other, the other palettes have. Maybe Izaro's kind of close. I'd say that's my closest. And I haven't used this that much. You can see some divots. They tend to be really pigmented, so they last a long time. And um, I have a really nice selection. And I almost, sometimes I'm almost afraid to use it because I don't want to use it up because it's just so perfect and so beautiful the way that it is. But absolutely love it. And like I said, that's my European Castle palette. And then we go into one that we recently did on here. I will put a link in the description. My little vintage mixed palette. And this is a mix of um, several different types, 
like Mission Gold and Shinhan. Um, and I just made something that looks like more like from the 50s, the 60s type palette. And then we go into Core. I only have a small one of Core. I did use it quite a bit when I first got it and then not so much anymore. The colors are brilliant and they move. They move a lot. So I call this my signage palette because it's almost like a stop sign like or a light up sign. It's like in your face, brilliant color, bold. Um, and um, they work great. I just tend not to grab for this palette that much. And then as far as another little palette, I had actually gotten um, the 36 colors from, from this company, from My Mary Blue. And I didn't end up using them that much. And I felt like the colors were very... A lot of the colors were very similar to the other colors. So I cut the palette down. And I call this my fruity palette because it tends to make me think of apples, oranges, lemons. I haven't used it that much, but I think this is a much more concise, um, travel-friendly, fun palette to have. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to show you a couple extra pictures. Let's see if we can... Um, this one would be my Mary Blue. Kind of makes you think of <laughs> fruit, bright colors. And then also, I forgot to show you one for a gallo, um, this little place by my house. Um, and you can tell the colors are very vivid by a gallo, but very muted at the same time. And then, let's see if I did I miss anyone else's? Oh, yep, I absolutely did. And this was a little picture. Holbein. Like I said, the colors are just so vivid, so brilliant that it does make me think of it like a surreal. And, okay, great. So then we're going to go into the big Schmika palette. And this one has like every color. I call it my Cityscape palette. And oddly enough, I don't actually gravitate towards this on a regular basis. I gravitate towards some of my other ones, but it has every color that I might need. And it reminds me of all the action that's happening in a city. And then we go to Sennelier. And I call this my delicate palette. The colors tend to be very transparent, great for all sorts of things. Haven't gravitated towards this that much, but I did do one recently. And that would be this one, this little urban sketch, which I think turned out really cute. Um, the colors do pop and everything. They just tend to... Um, be very transparent and I tend to have to use a lot of layers so I know that this is a very layering palette when I want to use it. Very good paints though. And then we have, uh, this is a mixed palette. It is some handmade paints, uh, Kramer and um, Prodigal Sun. I call this my old world palette. It does have old pigments in it and um, very, some of them are very well loved, have lots of holes in them. Um, and, um, yeah, I gravitate towards this one a lot. Um, some of the colors are not available readily anymore. Um, and if you saw, which you'll see in the near My Little Travel palette, some of these colors are duplicated in there, um, like the magnesium and stuff or manganese, sorry. Um, absolutely love this palette. Um, let me show you something. I just started this other sketchbook. I tend to have like seven sketchbooks going at the same time. So this will be coming up in the near. It has a paint along, the first one. So if you're interested in painting a little fairy cottage, let me know. 
and um, this one I just recently did with these paints and I really enjoyed um, working on this paper with these paints. I'm really liking this. I think the etcher paper might be a tad bit better, but I'm really liking these um, Hanamulu, Hanamula? <laughs> Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, sketchbooks with the all cotton paper. So I think we went through all the regular palettes and now I am going to get out some of the specialty palettes um, and I'll be right back. All right, we got out all the specialty palettes. So let's go ahead and move these off to the side. And in these are all the Kiritake, um paints that I have. I just have a few, I don't have a ton of them. And I don't tend to gravitate towards them because the pans, like I really like the paints. I just, I don't know the pan size or the way that they're something it sets me off to where I don't use them so I need to specifically tell myself to like take them out and use them but I had gotten like the 36 set originally and so I put them all in these because that box was just so cumbersome um, although you could see all the colors and I know a lot of people are really liking that Art Nouveau set um, I have not gotten my hands on that and um, you know, I keep debating over it because I'm like, I don't really use those that much, but I really like the paint and I really like the colors in that new set. Anyway, then I have my art graph here and also some of my graph tint. Um, very simple. Uh, these are the Schmika charcoal uh, paints and that's the graph tint and then the art graph. And it just keeps it all in one little spot. And then in this little one is Ink Tents. So, of course, that's my little inky palette. The Ink Tents all fit it right in there. The 24 set makes it nice and easy for when I need some of those. And they are quite brilliant. I don't use them that often, though. Then we have our pastels, which is a mix of Derwent and these two um, Prima Marketing Vintage and Pastel Dreams. And you can see the pastel colors there. I don't use these very often, but when I need a pastel, I definitely got a good selection. So you never know. Springtime, doing a little Easter something. Then let's go ahead and get into this one. I had originally gotten the Paul Rubens larger um, set of their sparkly colors and I kind of removed a couple, added a couple different ones, added um, these fluorescents which are by handmade um, one. Sorry, I can't remember their name offhand. And so if I need sparkles, uh, I have, I don't have any glitter in any of my other ones. Some of the Daniel Smith has like a natural looking um, kind of sparkle to them. I leave those in the in the normal palettes. These are just kind of, I call this my razzle dazzle palette because when I need to add a little sparkle, little bright color, something, this is the one that I go for. And they do sparkle really nice. I don't think anybody needs quite that many of them, but you know, it's kind of nice to have. And then um, this is my favorite kind of alternative palette. It is my super granulating palette. And I just did the new um, uh, Urban Sketch ones, which are right there. And then the Yintinko Pink is there. And you can tell this is really well loved because when I need granulating colors, I just grab this palette in addition to any of the other palettes. And basically then I have everything right at hand. Now I don't have all the Schmincke colors. Um, some of them I only have one or two from each of the sets. And there is three Rembrandt in right here. I did like those colors, so I went ahead and picked those up. And makes for a really nice 
add on to anything else. All right, we'll be back with all the travel palettes. All right, here we have all the teeny tiny travel palettes. So let's go ahead and we'll take a peek at all of these. These are two little ones that if you saw my little pop in my purse um, take with me kit, um, these go in there. And there's just a little Daniel Smith. And these are ones that I created myself. They're not any name brand. They're just business card holders. And some super granulating. So those go in that kit. And then we have in my um, Etcher Slate, I carry the little Letter Sparrow palette, which are these. And it's cute, but I probably wouldn't purchase this in the future. I think it's adorable. Um, I think uh, I'd like to fill my own more than I like to just get their pre-made palettes, but it's cute to have it. And I actually have one that I recently did out and about. I have a video on of me painting this on location. So if you want to check that out, that was done with these. And then I also have the uh, Sketch My World palette. And that's this one. And it's nice. I think it's stuck. I have this paper in there. Oh, it's stuck there. And um, it's nice. Um, same type of thing as that. I really love these palettes, but I really think that I like to fill my own better. Um, but I will definitely use those up. Then we have uh, this bigger one, which um, has mostly M. Graham in it. And some others. You can tell this one's a lot more well loved. I did fill this one myself with my own colors. Um, so this is like my main palette when I use um, the slate like on a tripod uh, when I go out and about. And uh, I need to refill this guy. He's looking pretty ugly. So <laughs> and then we have the little schminka. This is when you go to like a cafe. These type of three ones are like when you go to a cafe and you're just grabbing the little palette and little drawing thing. This one has not been used at all. I think I tested it out and obviously made this little swatch card, but uh, very simple. 12 colors can do everything with it, but it's nice that the, it has the water and the cup with it. So that works out perfectly for just throwing with a pen or a pencil and a little sketchbook. Then we go into this one which does not carry its own water or anything, but it being porcelain, I just, and I always mix on porcelain um, here. So I really wanted to try it. It's a great little palette. Unfortunately, it sticks when you have paints in there. It sticks to the cap and then I end up with a little bit of a mess. Um, it's great because you can carry so many colors, but also a little bit messy. So i probably skip this one in the future. Um, and these are all opinions. Some people this works great for. But I like to give you my honest opinion on what I'd actually purchase again. This one, absolutely. Um, this, oh yeah. Um, and this one, oh yeah. Um, I did do a full review and swatching of this one. And... Um, I call this my mushroom <laughs> and uh, you can put your water in there and it has oops, all the paints there. More similar to my handmade uh, colors that I really like. And I'll put a link for this video if you'd like to see the whole setup. And I love it that it has the water on board. So hopefully you found something that you like or a system that might work for you or a color that you might like. I will be swatching all the rest of my palettes. Um, I only have done like maybe four or five, maybe six of them. Uh, I will be swatching all the rest of them um, so that you can see like maybe colors that you want to pick out for yourself 
so that you don't have to buy quite as many as I have. And then eventually we will be doing a comparison of all warm blues, cool blues, um, greenish blues and so forth, you know, in the red category, the yellow category. So maybe with those comparisons as well, then you might be able to choose colors easily for yourself. I hope this was entertaining. I know it was a little long and a little high-winded, and I know I went through the pellets kind of fast, but I'm hoping that um, you kind of got a breeze of what's to come, and maybe you can pop on one of the other videos and see a more in-depth swatching of all the colors and get a couple of travel ideas for yourself. I really appreciate that you stuck around this long, and let me know in the comments if which ones you want me to swatch first for you. Uh, you have a great day now. Thank you. Bye-bye.